He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome to Coast View, the show that celebrates the men and women who are making Coastal Mississippi a better place to live, work, and play. Uh, today we have a great show. We have uh, the president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, Mary Graham, in the second half of the show. And in the first half of the show, we've got Mayor Chipper McDermott from the city of Pass Christian. Uh, Chipper, how are you? I'm fine. Doing fine. Yeah. So we had a few technical issues this morning, but let me tell you a quick story. For the show yesterday... I was at my place in Mississippi Delta and had everything set up, had the Wi-Fi ready to go, had the camera angles worked out, sound worked out, everything was great. And uh, sent a message to a friend and said, everything's ready to go 30 minutes before the show. When I hit the send button for the show, I mean, for that text, power goes out in, in, my, uh, in my lodge up there. And suddenly I have... No way to do the show. So I, I, I get in the car, I download Skype on my phone, and I go down the highway until I find three bars. I'm in this church parking lot in the middle, middle of the Mississippi Delta, sitting next to this beautiful uh, uh, soybean field, <laughs> and I do two segments of the show. And, uh, you know, you just work it out. You just work it out. So here we are this morning. Finally got a decent connection with you, and I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, so how I, have you been? I thought you mentioned you went to three bars what had alcohol. What you <laughs> I tell you what, it was pretty frantic. We, we felt, felt like we, I think Kyle and I both probably felt like we should go to one of those bars if there would have been one nearby. But anyway, we made the best of it. I think a church parking lot was the place to be at that moment. So anyway, uh, you doing okay? Doing all right. Doing okay. You know, um, we don't have a whole lot happens since the last time we spoke to you a couple of weeks ago, other than uh, it's gotten a little hotter out here. And uh, of course, the biggest thing is we're fixing to enter into the, probably the two worst months of the year to living on the coast. So we uh, we hope for the best from here for the next 60 days or so. Yeah, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about. I mean, I, I'm actually a, a, a bit of an amateur meteorologist. I spent a lot of time offshore. So over the many years, I've you know, just became a weather enthusiast, particularly a tropical enthusiast. And as you know from the experts, uh, this is already an active season. It's supposed to be an extraordinarily active season um, this this time. Uh, we're actually tracking ahead of 2005 in terms of named storms. You probably already know that. So uh, let's just hope we don't get one. You know, I, I really pity for any community that gets a storm this year with the COVID situation and the federal government's attention being elsewhere is not a good situation. Not at all. Not at all. We had a lot of water in that crystal ball that was here just back in May. So uh, it was flooding around everywhere between the rain and the high tides. And that was with a small wind blowing. So had that been uh, higher winds, we would have had probably more problems than we had. Because I know we would have. Well, you know, it was a large storm. It formed, you know, off the Yucatan Peninsula. It became, came off that South, South American gyre, they call it. And um, and we had hoped that when it when it went over the Yucatan that it would break up a bit, but it didn't. It just it stayed together, got into the Gulf. Man, if, this, if that would have been the end of July, August, or September, that would have been a monster storm. We got really lucky with the time of year that that thing sp spun off. But, you know, for a tropical storm, both in terms of storm surge and the amount of rain, it was it was pretty significant. What what was the overall impact on the city of Pasco Shan? Well, I mean, during the day, I was with the uh, our uh, first responders riding around with them, and if you didn't know this town, uh, you couldn't get more than three blocks either way because it was absolutely cut off. It's the most amazing thing in the world. And then after so, with uh, the biggest aftermath was the uh, beach out there, even though that's the county. I mean, you could just see how much debris had coming up from the marsh. It was unbelievable. Yeah, the, you know, as you know, the, the marsh goes through this life, you know, this cycle of life. It, it has uh, it, the old Spartina dies out, the new grows back. And uh, that was probably the first high water that we had gotten during that cycle. So the amount of seaweed and and uh, and marsh grass was just astronomical, wasn't it? Absolutely. I've never seen anything like that other than when Betsy hit back in 1965. I mean, that was that was almost equivalent to it. But as small as this was, it, it is absolutely astounding how much was out there. It was it was incredible. Finally getting the beach cleaned up, though, right? 
Yes. They're taking the last pieces where they piled it, but they did an outstanding job, tried to clean it off quick as they could to get ready for the 4th of July because everybody uses the beach at that point, so they did a very good job. Well, the last time we talked, you were you were pleasantly surprised at the number of people who have second homes in Pasco Shan and the amount of time that they were spending in Pasco Shan. Are you still seeing the amount of activity up pretty high? The realtors will tell you right now, they don't have any inventory right now. It's just amazing what people are buying around here. And second homes is is just uh, part of the Pasco Shan. I mean, the people live in eight to ten different states. They come down whenever they want. They pay in taxes all the time, but still. It is amazing. And, you know, of course, they don't get homestead exemption. So you've got some big houses here with a lot of taxes being paid. And uh, it is it's part of the part of the fabric here being second home. Well, one of the people, you know, I spent a lot of time in New Orleans, as you know. Uh, but one of the things that, that, that I've learned and I, I've got a couple and one in particular that's getting really close to buying a home now. He's moving here. He's going to continue to work in the city of, of New Orleans, but he's he's moving to. So either he's, the two choices now, I think, are somewhere in western Pasco Shan or, or just over the bridge in, in Bay St. Louis he's looking at. But he, he's, what he's going to do is going to keep his house in, in, uh, in, in uh, New Orleans, but that's going to be a second residence. His right. primary residence is going to be over here. I wonder how many people are talking in those terms these days. I think a lot. I would say 25% of this population is second home uh, people that don't leave it full time. And that, that's conservative. It may be as high as 30, but 25 would be a, absolutely a good number. So I had been keeping up with you guys pretty pretty well as you've been you know dealing with sort of reopening. Um, and uh, But then the numbers started to creep back up again. So what, what, what kind of impact does that have on you? Well, uh, that will really start today when the governor put those new mandates in. They're really going to affect today. So, um, you know, the amount of people can be inside, the amount of people can be outside. So uh, that, that's going to be a problem for all the cities. I don't know exactly how you're going to enforce it because we have three policemen on duty 24 hours a day. I mean, they not gonna, unless they're going to go in every building, but uh, I don't know. That's going to be a that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a problem. Well, we. Uh... <laughs> We have to nip it in the bud. If we don't, then, you know, as you well know, the biggest indicator of how we should respond is the amount of hospitalizations, ICU usage, et cetera. When you look at what's happening in the central part of the state and, and what's beginning to happen here, of course, you, you talk to hospital administrators the same as I do. They're cautiously optimistic that the number of positives have not resulted in the, the you know, a, an equivalent number of hospitalizations. But, but they're but they're also concerned because they they see where that line is headed, and if we don't, if we, if we don't uh, uh, nip it in the bud, it could really mean some a really difficult rest of the summer for us. That's uh, the way you see it as well, huh? Yes, and you know, I'm being. At Rotary the other day and hearing the superintendent speak, I'll tell you one of the toughest jobs coming up is going to be a teacher's job because they're going to have to teach people that are in the class. They're going to, have to teach other ones by the internet. Uh, they're going to have a meeting tomorrow. I understand the uh, athletic association decide whether they're going to even have football this fall. So uh, the the younger ones of school age and the teachers, they are really going to have a tough job. Yeah, I've been watching the, the sort of the college conversations as well as the pro conversations as it relates to football. And, man, there are no easy answers. And I, I look at the way that they're struggling with that. I, I just I, I don't know about high school sports. I don't know how high school sports can, can be played out because they said that when you, when you add passion and money to the equation, it makes it harder. If you take passion and money out of it, it's an easy decision. You, know, you shouldn't, shouldn't do it. Um, but the, but the bottom line is, um, you know, I think, you know, you saw what Harvard did, uh, excuse me, the, the Ivy league colleges did, they, they've canceled their seasons, but when, you know, you closer, you get to the sec, the tougher it is because you got more passion, you got more money. Uh, what do you think decision is going to be as it relates to high school athletics? I don't know. I, my athletic director here for our city programs told me that, uh, they're going to, meet tomorrow. I think they were going to meet today and they changed it to tomorrow to make their decision, which then will impact these uh, city of city. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, so we're coming to the end of our segment together, uh, Mayor, but uh, any final thoughts before we get before we sign off? No, uh, this, you know, 2020 has been an unusual year and I hope there's not any more anything unusual in the next six months. Uh, 
I hope you will find out Santa Claus is coming in June next year, but uh, it's been an unusual year. We appreciate you uh, inviting us in here and all you do at your show. You do a wonderful job. Well, thank you, buddy. I pray we'll pray for no hurricanes. That's what we we need to just kind of put COVID to bed, not have any hurricanes, and uh, that go into the fall with maybe a little bit of football and and um, you know healthy families and friends. That's yes, what sir. we're hoping for. <laughs> we'll see you again next time, Mayor. Thank, thank you. you. Uh huh. Subscribe for free to the Coast View Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi minute with my friends. We are with the fabulous Norbert Putnam as he played on so many hit records, you can't count them, and produced for some of the biggest acts ever. Uh, Norbert, Elvis. And I want to tell you about Presley. He had two different voices. He would sit and talk to me in a very calm, low voice. And we were at Stax one night, and we were having lunch. We always had lunch at midnight because he was nocturnal. We sat there, and we have our sandwiches, and at 1 o'clock, he looked up. He said, hey, Pot, come on, it's time for me to go beat up. And he stood up in a much deeper voice. He put on his macho voice. Hey, fellas, uh, it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> Let's get cracking, okay? In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, Amazon Alexa, and now on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Let me know if you're in route. Back. 109 on Unconscious, Main Street, and West Road. A lot of people are just worried about supplies. Our supplies are getting pretty low, and that gives us great concern. Aside from the PPE issues, they're really worried about if they are exposed and they have to be away from work for a certain amount of time. We're going to need some money there. And so that's one way the public can support us as well as just keep sending money into that support fund. What I really, truly hope is that people don't forget that feeling right now of wanting to volunteer and give back to their community. I hope this doesn't dramatically change the volunteer fire service. This is House Call for Health. Medical researchers spend years developing drugs to treat cancer, but it's possible the next big cancer-fighting breakthrough could already be in your medicine cabinet. Scientists have long known that a drug for one ailment can sometimes be effective in treating something else. Aspirin is the most famous example. Researchers at Harvard, MIT, and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute tested more than 4,500 existing medications. They found 48 drugs that killed at least some cancer cells. These drugs Drugs are for several different conditions, including diabetes, inflammation, and alcoholism. One drug is used for treating arthritis in dogs. Researchers in the journal Nature Cancer said the medications sometimes worked in different ways than mainstream cancer drugs. Now they hope these drugs can be further developed into true new weapons against cancer. For more health news, go to foxnewshealth.com. House Call for Health. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. That was a terrific conversation with Mayor Chipper McDermott. If you missed it, you can go to to the uh, Facebook page, Super Talk Gulf Coast Facebook page, and and watch it. Of course, the very first thing out of his mouth is concerned about the next couple of months as it relates to hurricane season. I don't blame him. I mean, Pastor Christian has had its share of disaster, that's for sure, not to mention COVID. But uh, with the with the experts saying we should we could have a, a hyperactive se- season, especially in the Gulf, I don't blame him for being concerned about it. Let's hope that we don't get it. I mean, I can't imagine what it would be like if we were to have a hurricane hit us with any significance. And this COVID environment 
where the federal government's attention shifted elsewhere. You know, after Katrina, the world's attention was on us. But if we were to be hit by a hurricane, it would be very difficult to get the attention on us in the environment that it is. I, I hope a hurricane doesn't hit anybody for that matter. Now let's shift gears and, and move over to my dear friend, Dr. Mary Graham, the president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Mary, how are you? I'm doing well, Ricky. Thanks for having me today. It's great to have you. Um, of course, we did an extended Coast View session together where we talked about your your influences in your life and how you came to be president of Gulf Coast Community College. Um, you've uh, you've been a terrific leader there. And then we talked, I think, early in the COVID crisis, and uh, you were just trying to feel your way through it, like we all were. Sure. Um, and now here we are. It hasn't waned. <laughs> if anything, actually, we're we're seeing an uptick in the numbers, which I know causes all all leaders of, of coastal Mississippi, no matter what sector you're from, to be concerned. But why don't we do this? I, I want to kind of we've got a couple of segments, maybe even three segments together. What I want to do is get the latest on the COVID impact there at the school. Some of you know what's the latest on the decisions you're making, et cetera. And then I want to take a step back for a second and remind people about how important Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College is, not only to the coast of Mississippi, but to the state, and talk about where your campuses are located, the important economic development work that you're doing. We'll, we'll try to cover the spectrum in our conversation today. So let's start with what's the latest there as it relates to the COVID situation. Well, Ricky, I think it's important uh, as we have this conversation about COVID and our reaction to COVID to really take just a moment and brag on our employees at Gulf Coast Community College. You know, we have such a flexible workforce here and they have been 100% committed to ensuring that this engine does not slow down and we have moved forward. Uh, our faculty have just done an amazing job pushing everything online we still have some face-to-face -face classes for summer as you can imagine some things absolutely have to be taught face-to-face -face. and then those instances of course we're following all the cdc guidelines and all of that but fast forward to fall um, we've been advising students both in person and online and uh, registering students and and making sure that they have a comfort level uh, with being a part of Gulf Coast Community College. You know, the interesting thing, I'm a big proponent of opening the doors and bringing students back in a safe manner. I will make sure that we follow CDC and we're already always doing that. But I think there's some psychological aspects to getting people back in a classroom, interacting with their instructor. A lot of people have different learning styles and we're providing alternatives for students. Ricky, we're doing this really cool thing called High Flex. And so students who register at Gulf Coast uh, can choose to be online and be at home and, and in their safe environment at home as they see fit. But students who wanna come back can come into the classroom. If they decide, okay, next week I wanna be at home, then they can shift back and forth according to uh, you know whatever it is that they have a comfort level and the material and, and depending on the course they take. So our goal has been, let's provide them with some choices they can come in, they can be safe, they can follow our guidelines, or they can stay at home and, and get the same 100% quality learning experience. Wow, that's very interesting. So how do they literally check in and they, they're they're watching the same teaching mm -hmm. uh, remotely that the kids that would be doing it there are, are seeing it? Absolutely. We've really uh, worked hard this summer and continuing to do so. We're investing, uh, continuing to invest in hardening our technology so that instructors can have that synchronous and asynchronous learning experience for students. So they can check in, we take role, we take attendance, um, they can watch it later if they need to. So it's just really, it's pushed us, you know, there's always some good that comes out of the bad. I say that often about Katrina, but the good that's come out of COVID is it's really pushed us to take our innovation and our technology to the next level. And boy, we have done that. You know, you and I may have talked about this before, but it's it, this is a common subject in most of the conversations I have. I, I don't care which industry you talk about, they all talk about how technology trends have been accelerated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, distance learning is probably one of the most significant, but, you know, how we're doing this show. Um, you know, telemedicine and how that's, you know, how that has literally right. changed things. You know, the, the federal government relieved a lot of the pressures 
that were on a lot of the regulations that were on telemedicine almost immediately. And then it just, it just literally blew up. So, um, yeah, you know, in some ways we won't ever go back to exactly where we were before because technology has really innovated how we can do things now. And, you know, as you point out, face-to-face, everybody says it, face-to-face is really important. But the fact that we have the ability to use technology today in ways we didn't before, that you and I are doing this show, I can see your facial expressions, we can, we can read each other and have a, have a pretty good conversation this way. Mm-hmm. I would think that teaching is very much the same way. Absolutely. You know, there's there's so much to be said for that individual experience. I I have a high, I mean, a, a college freshman at home right now who is very interested in being back in the classroom and being back in the dorm. So I can see the psychological impact as well of people being at home and not socializing. Uh, it's a challenge for them. And so our goal is really to try to establish, I won't say normalcy because that's, we're beyond that. Um, just to to give them some some structure back, to give them something to hope for and look forward to. Are you doing this flex training or flex teaching now? Yes, are you, are, we are yeah. actually. Um, High Flex, uh, we've implemented it. Our instructors, again, I cannot say enough about their commitment to this institution and to our students. They've been in training. We've been and continue to do online, Ricky. That's not new for us. We we have 30% of our enrollment was online prior to COVID. So we have a lot of well-trained instructors, but there are some that had chosen to teach face-to-face. And so some of them have had to go through some pretty intensive training, but now with the high flex, which is even a, a bigger level or more advanced level of training, all of our faculty have had to do that this summer. So yes, um, they've stepped up and they've embraced it. And, you know, I think just like you and I, who would have thought that we'd be interviewing this way? You just embrace it and you're flexible and you go with it. You make the best of it. Yeah, you, de- you definitely do. So what are your enrollment numbers? How, how do they look? Wow. You know, I am so happy to tell you this summer we're up 20 percent. Uh, which is not the norm for most institutions. But let me tell you what we did. We did the buy one, get one free this summer. Uh, We had an opportunity to do that for students because we really wanted to reach out to high school students and to freshmen and sophomore, give them the opportunity. Finances were a challenge, so we knew we needed to do something to go above and beyond. So we're just blowing and going this summer. Our fall numbers are creeping up. Um, people are uncertain as to where they want to be in the fall. <clears throat> so we're looking forward to increased numbers in the fall. I'm optimistic. You know, that's my middle name. You have to be as a college president. Um, I'm optimistic that because we're going to provide these really high flex alternative options that students will choose for a third of the cost to go to Gulf Coast Community College rather than go on to the university and have those options to be in class or be at home. <laughs> well, I don't think that's just optimism. I, I think that's your nature. I think you're, you're a good leader and optimism is part of who you are. But with optimism uh, comes a s- sort of a smart strategic approach to, to running your business, in this case, a, a, an educational institution. When you look at what's happening around the country as it relates to education in general, uh, and you think about how you can smartly use things like your flex program and your your um, competitive advantage when it comes to cost, your proximity to coastal Mississippi, and the fact that there's not a full f- uh, full fledged four year university in, in, in coastal Mississippi. There's a lot of there's a lot going for you guys right now. And so what you've done is you've put the tactics in place that would enable you to be successful. And uh, you know I think that this may be. Uh, a, a, a new age for for Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. At least, at least that's the way I see it. Because I think, first of all, we're going to be in this COVID environment for a while. I, I, even if we get a vaccine in you know, in in the next six months, it's going to take a while for all that to to play out and for people to feel confident about it. For people, everyone to get their vaccines, et cetera. And what in the in the meantime, you're going to be introducing your programs, your opportunities to a wide range of potentially new students. You're two for one. What a smart idea to introduce new people to your to your programs. Why don't we do this? We're coming to the end of the segment. We'll pick it up right there. Strategic 
tactical things you're putting in place to take advantage of this moment and introduce your your college to a whole new crop of potential students. We'll be back after this with Dr. Mary Graham from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Listen live or on demand and watch episodes of Coast View on your laptop, desktop, or on your phone or tablet by going to supertalkmsgulfcoast.com. Get out of the house and over to Big Play today. Two massive arcades, bowling, go-karts, two mini golf courses, a two-story state-of-the-art laser tag arena, bumper cars, and right now get a $50 game card for only $25. Visit our station's Facebook and print on demand so you can play at Big Play Entertainment Center now. These deals won't last long, so make sure you get your half-off deal. Big Play Entertainment Center, Highway 90 Biloxi. Bowl, play, eat. Go to our station's Facebook to get your half-off deal now. The Dean's List with Janice Dean. A compassionate young man who became a dinner companion for a stranger makes today's Dean's List. Lisa Mielander and her family had been eating at the Eaton Park in Belle Vernon, Pennsylvania, when she noticed how her server was interacting with a senior patron. The server, Dylan Teetle, had dropped to one knee so he could give his full attention to the gentleman. Lisa wrote on Facebook, the man apologized for not hearing well, and he talked about how he lost his hearing during the war. He was 91 years old with many stories to tell and Dylan patiently listened giving him his full attention he also helped the man figure out a meal from the menu before putting the order into the kitchen Lisa tried to flag Dylan down so she could offer to pay for the man's meal Dylan said someone else had already taken care of the check before leaving her table Lisa snapped pictures of Dylan chatting with the senior and published them to Facebook where they have been since shared thousands of times thank you Dylan for your kindness and Lisa for sharing the story with all of us Janice Dean Fox News. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Supertalk Mississippi. Covering the Bulldogs like no one else. Staying informed is a full-time job, even more so during an election year. That's why Supertalk is here. With Fox News, News Mississippi, and the Super Talkers, you'll go inside the campaigns and we'll separate what's real from what's not to bring you the latest information that matters. From now until you go into the voting booth on November 3rd, your election headquarters is Super Talk Mississippi. Mississippi. Available on the Super Talk app and at supertalk.fm. From the Gallo Radio Show Archives. Archives. In the house, Mike Hurst. When I started at the end of 2017, sadly, our office had gotten so low during the last administration. I think in FY16, we prosecuted 11 illegal immigration cases. 11, which is is embarrassing. First year I was there, we had jumped almost 700 percent to 77 prosecutions. And Paul, that number I think is going to increase very much more this year. We are continuing to see illegal immigration uh, impact crime around the state. I'll give you a perfect example. About a month ago, we prosecuted an illegal alien who had brought nine kilos of heroin and one kilo of fentanyl through our state. Now, to give your listeners an idea of what 2.2 pounds of fentanyl will do, that will wipe out a million people, Paul. That will wipe out a third of our state. This has been another Gallo Radio Show audio archive. We know that we're asking Americans to do a lot right now. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible to this virus. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people. It's what we refer to when we ask people to stay at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or affect you. 
we all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. If a muckety-muck wants you to hear what they got to say, they come here first and sit down with Gallo and JT. This is Ground Zero for all Mississippi muckety-mucks. Super Talk Mississippi. Watch your favorite Super Talk shows in HD. Just go to supertalktv.com. Ever wonder what goes on in the studio during the shows? Now you can watch what happens in HD. Super Talk TV, streaming now on supertalktv.com. Whether you're a rebel, a bulldog, a golden eagle, or just a sports fan, Super Talk Mississippi has got a podcast for you. For you. Sports Talk Mississippi, The Rebel Report, Thunder and Lightning, The Super Talk Eagle Hour, and The Borky Show are all now available for you. And it's all free. Free. Get them all on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Super Talk on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Dr. Mary Graham, president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College with us today. And when we went to break, we were talking about the tactic were really the strategic opportunities made available to Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College as a result of the COVID situation. Um, cost is lower. This high flex program that they put in place where students can choose to either go for, you know, participate in the classroom from home or from the classroom. That's their choice, but they have to check in so that they can't dodge reporting. As we were saying at the break, the student still has to say, I'm here. Uh, there's accountability in the system. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. They put some things in place to, to help drive enrollment up 20% this this current semester. Um, it's really cool to hear that. Uh, and, and as I mentioned before we went to break, it's going to be, I think, the opportunity for Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. And one of the things you mentioned is that a lot of students have to do face-to-face. -face. You, you don't have the ability to high flex and something like technical training. Correct. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Well, you know, those instructors have put some things online and, you know, built a, a, a system or a curriculum that can be delivered online in large part. Uh, things that we have never done before online. And so we're learning and, and working with those students through Zoom and some other uh, formats. But uh, we're also buying things like kits for our career and technical students. So uh, obviously we're not sending welding machines home with them, but we're giving them some tools so they can go home and do some practices and then jump online or actually come into the classroom in smaller groups. And we've been doing that this summer as well. You know, we have small groups that come in, the less than 10, wearing masks six feet apart, and they're engaging one-on-one -on -one with instructors and learning some hard skills. Um, and so there will be programs that really aren't conducive to the high flex, but majority of them will have that opportunity to do that. So one other technology we're looking at, which is virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, we're working in that arena, hopefully uh, purchasing some of that this year so we can implement for our students. So then you can do some of those career technical programs in a virtual environment. They would literally have some kind of an eyeglass they would wear and right. and learn from. Wow, that's that's really incredible. But you know, people need to hear this: that 54% of your students are either workforce training or, or other non-credit students. It's 46% of credit students, so meaning they're getting college credits. They may sure. intend to go further to to a, a big university somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thirty-three percent are part-time, sixty-seven percent are full-time. But the workforce training and other non-credit student uh, 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 part of your uh, your college is is really important, isn't it? It's very important. And the great news is the legislature, in their infinite wisdom, were able to push some COVID dollars down for workforce training. So we're making our priorities now for those expenditures, and you will see a whole new arena of workforce training opportunities for students. In many cases, uh, some of those will not have a cost associated with them. So, so we think that's important 
um, hold on, my watch is going off. That's okay. That's okay. You know, one of the, I think I think people would be surprised. Maybe they wouldn't be surprised to hear that your nursing program is one is the top ranked nursing program in the state. Uh, Absolutely. So that's we're, we're that is. That is that is incredible, and you're you know, the work you're doing with Ingalls and Pascagoula, the work that you're doing with other industries across the coast, uh, all really important. Like for example, talk about the the Haley Barber Center over in Pascagoula. Yeah, we have 13 apprenticeship programs over in the Haley Barber Center over in Pascagoula, which is one of our lo 10 locations. Um, strictly apprenticeship training. We work um, hand in hand with. Um, Ingalls Shipbuilding, we do a lot A lot of our workforce training is with Ingalls Shipbuilding because they're one of the largest manufacturers on the coast. And we also work with VT Halter and some other companies along the coast. We deal with hundreds of companies as needed for workforce training. So uh, the great work that's going on over at um, the Haley Barber Center is we have full-time instructors working every day in the career arena with our students uh, in an apprenticeship format. And then we're also able to competency base those skills and give them transcriptable credit and they can go on and get their academic coursework and earn an associate's degree. So they can earn 50% of their associate's degree by learning a craft in the apprenticeship program. Well, that, that's awesome. You know, one of the things you have going in your is a serious advantage for you is your teacher to student ratio. It's why is that important? I think it's important as we go back to the earlier conversation we had about that engagement with students. Students want to engage with their instructor. They want their instructor to know their name. They want them to be concerned about them if they don't show up for class. They want a phone call. They want to have a personal relationship uh, in terms of education with those students. And our instructors, it, it takes a unique person to be a community college instructor because we're uh, literally just wrapping our arms around students to make sure we're meeting their educational needs, their student service needs, all the things that keep them engaged in college and staying in college and being retained and learning the material we're trying to lay out for them. So community college employees and community college faculty are all in. So as you, you know my story well, but my relationship with uh, Weta White yeah. Uh, one of my instructors at, at, at the Jeff Davis campus was really important. I had gone to paramedic school at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and then was in pre-med and then made a decision to change my major. I started all over again, did the two plus two program from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, finished at Southern Miss with an MBA. But it was that time at JD and that relationship I had with Weta White and others, uh, Mr. Stamps, you know, you know, I've talked okay. about him before, God, God rest his soul. But, um, I mean, I, those are some of the most formative years for me. I, I always, you know, I think that people reach these forks in the road where these, these, a situation or a relationship changes the trajectory of your life. My time at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College was that for me. It was this incredible opportunity to build an educational ground, uh, you know, foundation that that really changed my life and uh, you didn't ask me to say that i just it just as you know it's part of who i am and I, so i'm a big big believer in mississippi gulf coast community college for that reason i know that everything you say is is real and uh and important and uh i'm glad to be able to say that but you hear a lot of people say that don't you you do and you know the great thing about our students and i think this situation happened with you is that an instructor will see something in you that you don't even see in yourself. And because we have the smaller classrooms with 20 to 25 people, those instructors are able to say, hey, Ricky, I see some talent there. You should consider X, Y, Z. And you may not get that in another environment, but at Gulf Coast, our instructors are truly looking to kind of find those hidden talents of our students. So we can be a little intrusive with them and say, hey, we think you should do X, Y, Z, or we think you have a great opportunity you have a talent you don't even know about. And again, that's why I can't say enough about our faculty. They are just very much um, involved in students' lives and trying to make sure that they get the most they can out of their college experience. So let's put this in perspective. So we have, uh, we have in Mississippi, one of the strongest community college systems in the United States. 
I want you to talk about that for a second. Okay. You, you have great coordination and communication with the other community colleges in the state of Mississippi, but you're also extremely competitive. So you're one of the top in the state of Mississippi in, in a lot of categories. And Mississippi's system is one of the best in the United States, which essentially makes Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College one of the best in the entire United States. Absolutely. Uh, how, I mean, you keep t giving credit to the teachers, and that's true. You've got great teachers, good leadership. But what do you, I mean, how is it that it continually, year after year, is one of the highest ranked there is? Why is that? Well, I'll tell you, we're, we're about to launch a new strategic plan, Ricky, uh, in this fall. Strategic Plan 2030. It's called Accelerate 2030. And so I think as an institution, you have to always be looking ahead. You can't be looking behind you to see what's happened. You have to be looking forward to see what might be expected or what you can try to make happen. And so we set an expectation. Uh, we always have a measure of accountability. We want to see this increase in retention. We want to see this increase in enrollment. We want to receive this number of grants. So we set the bar pretty high and we're always striving to, to achieve those goals. And so I think that um, to be a really outstanding and top notch institution, you have to really set high expectations for your people. Our level of excellence is up here. You know, we're, we're always trying to get to the top. We want to be the best at everything. You know, we don't want to be the best in Mississippi. We want to be the best in the nation. And so our bar is up here. Um, and so I think as a result of that, our leaders are strong. They understand what we're trying to do. And, you know, we all do it for the students. That's the most important. It's not an accolade for us as leaders or faculty. It's because we want our students to say, hey, I graduated from the best community college in the United States. All right. Yeah. That's Gulf Coast Community College. So. Well, that's, and we're a that's little competitive, awesome. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, I know you are. I mean, co competition is what makes you better. I mean, it, it keeps you focused on uh, measuring. You know, I always, always believe what gets measured gets done. So if you, if you, stay, if you stay focused on... Absolutely believe in that. And, you know, we collect a lot of data. We have a great institutional research department. We collect a lot of data to try to make sure we're measuring up. So let's do this. When we come back, I want to talk about athletics. I want to check in on how your board of trustees is doing. Uh, we'll, we'll get into those things when we get back from the break. So this is Dr. Mary Graham from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, and we'll be back after this break. Okay. You can also listen live to Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1 on your Amazon Alexa devices. Once you've enabled the skill, just say, Alexa, open Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast. Feeling down? Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. Hey, want to come work for the number one radio group on the coast? Telesouth Media has a great opportunity for an outside sales consultant. Get paid while having fun and work in the exciting, fast-paced world of radio. We have award-winning stations like 97.9 CPR Rocks, 105.9 The Monkey, G96.7, Super Talk 103.1, and 103.5 The Possum. Take the first step towards a new and rewarding career. Submit your resume to jesse at telesouth.com. That's J-E-S-S-E -S -S -E at telesouth.com. Telesouth Media is an equal employment opportunity employer. This is House Call for Health. There may be no greater medical mystery and no greater tragedy than sudden infant death syndrome. It used to be known as crib death. For no apparent reason, a presumably healthy sleeping baby dies. Medical experts don't have clear-cut answers to what causes sudden infant death or SIDS, but now they have two risk factors, smoking and drinking during pregnancy beyond the first three months. A new study finds that babies whose mothers drank alcohol and smoked tobacco after to the first trimester are at far greater risk of SIDS, 12 times greater. Previous studies showed a risk of smoking and drinking individually. This study says doing both drastically increases the danger. The research is sponsored by the National Institutes of Health, which is calling for greater publicity about the danger and improved screening at the very beginning of a pregnancy. 
For more health news, go to foxnewshealth.com. House Call for Health. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi minute with my friends. We are with the fabulous Norbert Putnam as he played on so many hit records, you can't count them, and produced for some of the biggest acts ever. Uh, Norbert, Elvis. And I want to tell you about Presley. He had two different voices. He would sit and talk to me in a very calm, low voice. And we were at Stacks one night, and we were having lunch. We always had lunch at midnight because... He was nocturnal. We sat there and we have our sandwiches, and at one o'clock, he looked up. He said, Hey, Pot, come on, it's time for me to go be off. And he stood up, and a much deeper voice, he put on his macho voice. Hey, fellas, oh, it's one o'clock. <laughs> Let's get cracking, okay? In a Mississippi minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi. Amazon Alexa, and now on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Everyone knows the only thing better than pizza is free pizza, and right now buy a $10 gift certificate to CeCe's Pizza for only $5. It's like buying a pizza and getting a pizza for free. Go to our station's website or Facebook, look for the Half Off Deals logo to purchase this amazing deal right now. Super Talk. Nobody keeps Mississippi informed like we do. With 12 stations covering all 82 counties. If it happens in your state, we're on top of it. The news, the weather, the sports, and the talk that's important to you. The issues that matter to you, your family, and your bank account. It's all right here. And when you're away from home, depend on the Super Talk app and supertalk.fm to stay in the know. We're proud to serve our fellow Mississippians. Super Talk Mississippi. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Dr. Mary Graham from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College with us today. And uh, as we were talking about before we went to the break, they measure everything. They're extremely competitive. You know, this is one of the, they're very strategic, always looking for where the opportunities are in the future, a way to, to be able to connect what the college does to the realities of the world and where the, where the teaching needs are going to be and where economic development opportunities are going to be. Uh, they're just super focused. And that's one of the reasons why Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College j doesn't just make the claim. They actually are one of the top community college systems in the United States. So let's do this. Let's shift gears for a second. We've got so, you know, about six minutes left. I want to I want to hear what your thinking latest thinking is on athletics. Well, Ricky, to start off with, you know, we have 10 intercollegiate sports programs at Gulf Coast Community College. Very competitive, won a national championship in football last year, won a national championship in golf uh, the year before that. So we, again, we're as competitive in the classroom as we are out on the field or in on the, on the court. So one thing I do want to brag on just a little bit before we get on uh, talking about where we're going with athletics is this year, um, all of our athletic programs had at least a 3.0 grade point average and above. And so we're super proud of that. Um, that's football, basketball, soccer, golf, all of those sports. So they were recognized as having some of the highest GPAs in the nation for athletic teams. So we're serious about athletics. We're very competitive, but there is an accountability measure for those athletes to do what you came to Gulf Coast to do, which is get your degree and do well in the classroom. So I'm super proud of that. I wanted to get that out there, that if you send your athletes to Gulf Coast, not only are they gonna excel and be recruited by universities and um, you know other sports teams, they're gonna do well in the classroom and go on to the university. So we're excited about that. So athletics, big unknown. I know the high schools haven't made a decision on football. Football is king in Mississippi, as we all know. I know that after Katrina, the one thing that brought everybody back to some normalcy was a football game. Um, and so I don't know if that's gonna happen because there's so many challenges with COVID. Um, right now, I think the NJCAA, which is our National Athletic Association for Community Colleges and Junior Colleges, they're making a decision today. And so uh, we're waiting to see what that final decision is. And obviously we will acquiesce as we need to, but Mississippi is unique. 
and that we have our own conference. And so we could just play in Mississippi and, and be, you know, really engage our players and athletics and our athletes and a lot of opportunities, but we're not going to do anything above and beyond what's recommended by Dr. Dobbs and, you know, our COVID regulations and CDC regulations. So we're kind of on a wait and see. I personally want to see what the SEC is going to do, the NCAA. I think there are a lot of conferences that are trying to make a decision on football. Um, and again, we will acquiesce, but we want to offer some hope. We have a 250 member band. They're waiting to see if we're going to play football. They want to play football. They want to get out there and play their instruments. So we've got cheerleaders. We've got a dance team. We've got folks that are really wanting to come back. But again, we're not going to do anything out of the ordinary. We're going to make sure that we are compliant. And if we can play and it makes sense, we will. And if we're told we can't play, then we won't. Yeah, I've heard, you know, some colleges are even thinking about delay until the spring. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it all plays out. My thought I, is I, that's what the NJCAA will recommend. And, you know, there's some challenges there because if you talk about football, most of our football players graduate in the fall and go on in the spring for spring training at the universities. And most of our sophomores are signed, as you know. When you have a national championship team, a lot of those players go on to the next level to play. So there will be some challenges there, and we just have to work through those. But um, again, we'll do what we need to do. But okay. we're, we're holding out. We're trying to thanks hold for those up. Thanks for that update, and congratulations yeah. on all your success. So how is the Board of Trustees doing these days? You know, our board, you talk about getting uh, acclimated to technology. They um, have done very well. Our last few board meetings, I think the last four board meetings have been online. We use WebEx and uh, they've actually done quite well. We've had great um, connectivity and great attendance at our board meetings. Uh, you know, we cover Harrison, Jackson, Stone and George. And so we've got a very progressive board. They're very supportive. Um, they're, they've endorsed our strategic plan that we're going to launch in the fall. They had a hand in developing that plan. Um, I can't say enough about our board. They've been very supportive of, as me, uh, um, of me as a leader, giving me the opportunity to do some, you know, challenging things and risky things for the institution, which knock on wood have panned out in many cases. Uh, so we've got a great a great group of leaders on that board, and they're um, you may or may not know they're named by our supervisors. Our local supervisors name our um, board members to the board, and um, right now I've got a great group. Well, as you know, I know many of them, and uh, it is an active board, as you pointed out. Uh, they they bring incredible uh, advice from so many corners of our economy and our community. So that uh, you know, they're part of they're part they're in the mix. They're part of the reason why Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College is one of the top colleges in the United States. We're coming to the end of our time to, to, together, uh, Mary. But as usual, I'm just thrilled to have had this opportunity to check in with you. Um, I appreciate your leadership. I know the community does. It's important that you guys hit on every cylinder for so many important reasons. And you're doing that in this very difficult and challenging time. But you're, you've got a smile on your face and you're positive about it. And you're thinking about the future and you're making appropriate adjustments. And that's what leadership is all about. So thank you so much for, your, for uh, joining me today. Thank you, Ricky. And just one more shout out. We're registering every day at Gulf Coast and classes start in August. So if you're interested, we'd love to have you. Absolutely. This is Dr. Mary Graham from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College and have a great day. Thank you, Ricky. Follow Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1 on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Super Talk MS Coast 103.1.